Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I want to talk to you guys about working with numbers in JavaScript. Numbers are extremely important in any programming language, and a lot of times, especially in JavaScript, you're going to want to be uh, using numbers, storing them, doing math with different numbers. So I'm going to show you how you can do things like that. Most basic form of a number is just typing out the number like this. So here I'm using this document.write command, and I'm just having it print out this number. In addition to just having a solid whole number like this, you can also use numbers with decimals. So I could say like 3.245 and it's still going to work. So JavaScript doesn't really um, care which type of number you use. In certain programming languages, uh, they separate like whole integer numbers and decimal numbers, but JavaScript doesn't do that. So uh, you can pretty much write out, you could write 2 or you could write 2.0. It's all the same to JavaScript. You can also do basic arithmetic with numbers. So I could say two plus two, and JavaScript will recognize that we're trying to use a mathematical operation here, and it'll actually do the calculation and print it out. So you can see we get four. In addition to addition, you can also use subtraction, division using the forward slash, and multiplication using the asterisk, just like that. And if you want, you can also group different numbers in mathematical equations using parentheses. So you can control things like order of operations. So if I was to say like two plus seven, this will do the multiplication first and then it'll add. So it'll be four plus seven, so we'll get 11. But if I wanted, I could do the opposite. So I could put parentheses around these guys and now it'll execute this first. So we'll get nine times two and we should get 18. So using parentheses, you can control like the order of operations and how these get calculated. You can also store these things inside of variables. So if I wanted, I could create a variable over here and we'll just call it number. And I can set this equal to you know a, a specific number. So we could say this is six. And then I could actually use this inside of my mathematical equation. So I could say number times two plus seven. So this will now be six times nine. So we'll get 54. And you know you can mix and match. You can use all sorts of uh, different variables, and you could do different things with different variables. There's also a, a couple other operators that we could use. So, if I wanted, I could just uh, get other information. So, for example, if I used uh, three and then I said this percent sign, what this is is called the modulus operator. So this will actually divide these numbers and then it will give me the remainder. So three divided by two is going to be one with a remainder of one. And so this is just going to return one. If I made this a 11, this should just be again one because we have a remainder of one. So that's sort of the basic operators that you can use uh, as far as like arithmetic goes with JavaScript. There's also a bunch of math methods that we can use. So there's a lot of like mathematical operations that you're going to want to do if, you know, you're working with these numbers and you can use special methods to do them. And a method is basically just like a little snippet of code that you can run and the method will perform specific operations for you. And we can actually pass these methods different information. So let's just work with this number down here. And I'm just going to make this two. So we can use specific methods. And I want to show you guys just some common methods that you're going to use. The first one is absolute value. So if I had a negative two up here, I can actually use this absolute value method. So I want to say math. And every time you're using a math method, you need to say math dot ABS. So this is the name of the function or the name of the method. And then inside of parentheses, I can pass this a value. So I'm going to pass it this number variable that we created up here. What this will do is it'll just return the absolute value of the number. So we should just get two. So, you know, if this is negative or positive, it just returns like the absolute value. You can also uh, use other methods. So this one is called max. And in here you could pass two numbers. So I could give this two numbers and it'll spit out the maximum. So I could say number and I could say four. And so what this should do is it'll print out whichever number is bigger. And in our case, this is negative two. So it should print out four. And I could use another method called min, which will do the opposite. It'll print out the minimum. So now it'll print out negative two. You can also round numbers. So if I had a, a let's say that instead of a negative two, this was like a 2.4, I can use the round function. So I can say math.round. And we're just going to give this one parameter, which is going to be number. And this will round this number uh, according to standard rounding rules. So if it's uh, 0.4 or lower, it'll round down. If it's 0.5 or higher, it'll round up. 
So just like that. So round obviously can be uh, pretty useful. You can also use another method uh, called POW and this is like power. So I could pass a specific number into here and then I could pass in which power I wanted to take that to. So I can say number and we'll take it to the third power. So this will just be two uh, raised to the third power. And you'll see here that we get eight because two cubed is gonna be eight. And you can do the opposite. So I could say square root and then I could pass in uh, a number like for example, 36. And now this will give me the square root of 36. So we'll get six. There's one more method I wanna show you guys which is can be pretty useful and it's the random method. And this random method will basically return a random number between zero and one. So it'll return like a decimal number. So you can see like over here, uh, as I refresh the page, it's returning all of these different random numbers. And it's returning these numbers in decimal format. So basically you can get whatever numbers you want from this. So for example, I could use uh, some arithmetic. So I could say math.random times 10. And now this will give me a whole number. And I can also just round these numbers. So I could say like math.round and then inside of here, I can pass this entire value. So I'm saying math.round and I'm rounding this entire number, right? So you can kind of like embed these functions inside of each other. And so now we're just gonna get a whole number. So this would be equivalent to like rolling a 10 sided die, right? We're getting a random number between one and 10 or zero and 10. So those are some basic uh, math methods. Obviously when you're working with numbers, like these can be really useful. And it really just like takes a lot of the hassle out of doing some common mathematical operations. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you wanna help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.